Hello everyone, welcome back to What If Izuku Was a Leveling Hero? Be sure to like, share, and check out the author, AC1 Ermai. Again, the author's first language isn't English. I can only catch so many spelling mistakes. Also, this story is not yet completed, so this will be season 1 of this, so be sure to check out. The link's in the description down below. And with that let's begin. Chapter 13 Two months have passed since then, and the time for Izuku's release has finally arrived. Izuku is currently at the police station with Sujimoto to remove his cuffs. It only took a few minutes to take off the handcuffs, write a few reports, and sign some documents. Everything is taken care of by Tsukachi because he is Izuku's supervisor. With this all done, you are officially free now. Thank you Tsukachi-san and sorry for the trouble. It's okay, but don't make trouble in the future. Well I'll see you again Tsukachi-san. See you later. After finishing, Izuku walked out of the police station, meeting Sujimoto who was already waiting for him in front of the police station. Sujimoto-san. Sujimoto, who was checking his schedule, turned his head to look at Izuku who was walking towards him and then turned off his tablet. Is it done? Yes, it's not as long as I thought. Well, that's good. Should I treat you to celebrate your freedom? There's no need instead. How about I treat you since I'm the one who keeps bothering you here? Fine then. It was still early in the morning, and the two hadn't had breakfast yet, so they both headed toward the restaurant that was open for breakfast. While eating they chatted while discussing the dungeon, the distribution of which stones, and the bureau's problems. As they finished eating, Sujimoto headed to the bureau first, because he still had work to do. While Izuku was going to stay, he said he wanted to go out for a while before going home. After parting with Sujimoto, Izuku began walking down the street. It was Saturday, and there were a lot of people on the street. People walked, and gathered with their friends. Some heroes patrolled along the way. It was quite peaceful. He walked for 15 minutes when he suddenly remembered a place he hadn't been to recently. Izuku then turned towards the train station. It takes 5 minutes by train and 10 minutes walk from the station to get to the location. Well, it's been a long time since I've been here. Izuku arrived at Dagoba Beach. He hadn't been here in a long time due to his hectic schedule and detention. He looked around. There were still piles of garbage along the beach. I saw that this place has not changed in the slightest. It is still the same as before. A thought flashed through his head, and he jumped down and started collecting garbage. Given the large amount of garbage piled up and the vastness of the beach, it seems impossible to clean it up in a day. Izuku then summons some of his shadow soldiers to help him clear the beach. After a few hours of cleaning, he could only clean up a small part of the beach. Izuku decided to stop here for the time being and called the cleaning service to pick up the garbage. It didn't take long for the cleaning service to come. At first, the cleaners were surprised to see the pile of garbage that had accumulated quite a lot. He approached Izuku and asked if he was the one who cleaned up all this garbage alone. Izuku just gave him a nod in response. The janitor asked no further questions and then began work collecting garbage onto the truck. After paying the janitor, Izuku then went home. Along the way, Izuku checked his mobile phone and saw a message notification from the bureau. Izuku then opened the message as soon as he saw it. His schedule has been updated, and he sees that he has an attack scheduled for tomorrow. It was a D-ranked dungeon, and that team was a new team meant to train rookies. I guess Sujimoto san gave me some leeway, because this is my first raid after so long. After he finished reading all the messages, he turned off his phone and continued on the way home, resting and preparing for tomorrow's raid. The raid will start at 10 a.m., and Izuku is still getting ready in his room. After putting on the armor and preparing his weapons, he then went to the meeting room to meet the rest of his teammates. For this raid, Izuku is not alone. He is with Daichai, who is the leader of the raid, because he is an a rank hunter. Izuku was already there, and Daichai approached and greeted him as soon as he arrived. 
People have already gathered around, and it seems that he is the last one. Dio Izuku. So you are the last one, it's unlike you. Is it because this is the first time for you after so long? Hello Daichai san Sorry if I'm late. It's okay, it's okay anyway. Let's introduce you to the others. Daichai takes Izuku to face the rest of the team. Four people were sitting in front of him. Three men and one woman. They look about 18 to mid-20 years old, and their rank is E, some close to D rank. Izuku can observe them accurately because of his high sense stat. Okay everyone is Izuku. He is the one who will protect your back today. Not long ago he was promoted to B rank. He is indeed younger than you guys. Yet I can guarantee his ability. Hello, I'm Izuku, B rank, assassin. Please cooperate today. Izuku bowed slightly to give a greeting then raised his face, judging the reaction of others. One of them raised his eyebrows and one squinted his eyes, but most of them gave the same reaction, hesitating. It seems that they don't believe an 11-year-old child is a B-rank hunter, especially the warrior named Riku. He was one of the most promising among the trainees, but when he heard that there were the best graduates as well as the youngest hunters, he became curious. And now the person who has been a rumor has been in front of him. At first glance, he looked disappointed. In front of his eyes, Izuku didn't look impressive just by looking at his clean equipment, compared to Daichai's rough equipment full of scratch. After a while of observing each other, one of them began to introduce himself followed by the other. H. Hello nice to meet you. I'm Chiharu Mio, an E-rank mage. I'm Yamato Asa, the E-rank healer. Kiyoshi Riku, E-rank warrior. Same here, warrior rank E, Daisuke Tauma. After everyone introduced themselves, Daichai went in to take over. Okay now everyone knows each other. Let's get to the car before we are late. The car was already waiting for them in front of the building. They got into the car and then headed towards the dungeon location. It takes half an hour's drive and 15 minutes walk to get there. The location itself is deep in the forest and there is very little access here. There were already several agents guarding the gate when they got there. Daichai approached them, and after a while of conversation and some confirmation documents, they got permission to enter. Monsters began to appear as soon as they entered. With Daichi's signal, they started a battle. The new trainees fight well, and they can follow Daichai's direction well. Izuku didn't even need to intervene to help them. He just helped get rid of the monsters that escaped their attack. It was quite disappointing that he couldn't come forward to fight. But he had no choice. His task here was just to guard them, making sure the raid went smoothly. Two hours passed. All the monsters had been killed, and all that was left was the dungeon boss. They looked tired after a long battle. After a short break, they headed towards the boss's room. The boss is a giant golem monster made of stone. They can feel the intimidation coming from him. Daichai stepped forward raising the shield in his hand forward. He began to order the trainees to get ready. Daichai begins to attract the boss's aggro, while Chiharu begins to prepare a fire attack spell. When the boss's attention fell on Daichai, Chiharu cast her fire spell. The fire was successfully extinguished, and Daisuke and Kiyoshi then launched attacks from both sides. Izuku, who was just helping from the side, finally came to help in person. Just after the flame died, Izuku appeared behind the monster. He raised his dagger and aimed for the boss's leg joints that made it knelt on the ground. Seeing the opportunity, Daisuke made his attack on the boss monster, but the golem's hand hit him and made him hit the wall of the cave. Izuku immediately rushed towards him. Although blood dripped from his forehead, he seemed to be fine. Izuku then carried him on his shoulders and took him to Yamato to get treatment. After leaving Daisuke to Yamato, Izuku returns to battle, helping Kiyoshi who seems to be having trouble dealing with his boss. The boss's body was already covered with scratches and blackened because of Chiharu's fire spell. Kiyoshi looked out of breath. His body was sweating, but it seemed that he was not injured anywhere. Seeing their condition, Izuku decided to end this. Izuku disappeared and then reappeared behind the boss. 
so fast it was almost as if he was teleporting. Izuku dug into the boss's back with his dagger, exposing the core. The golem's body collapses as it loses its core. The others who were watching were shocked by the scene before them, and the fact that it was an eleven-year-old boy who finished it made them even more shocked. Even Daichai was taken aback. He thought Izuku's movements would be stiff. But Izuku fought better than he thought, exceeding his expectation. After cleaning his clothes, Izuku approached Kiyosi, who was sitting on the ground panting. Izuku stretched out his hand to help him up. The rest of the team also gathered around them. Daichai approached Izuku and hit him on the back. I see you are still sharp despite being under house arrest. Daichai teased Izuku in a playful tone. Izuku replied with an awkward laugh and then replied, Love you well. I never miss my daily workouts every day, so I don't lose my touch. TCH, what a diligent brat. You have to relax while you can. I'd be anxious if I just sat still. This brat. Daichai then turned to the others. Good job, everyone. Let's finish it so we can go home. They finished collecting mana stones and exited the dungeon. Daichai was talking to the bureau agent while the others were resting in the woods. Daichai then approached, and he offered them to have lunch together, which they agreed to. Hey Izuku, you didn't come. Sorry Daichai-san. I still have business after this. Maybe next time. Too bad. All right then. See you later. See you. Izuku parted ways with the others. His teammates went to the restaurant, while Izuku went to the station, taking the train to Tokyo. After getting off the train, Izuku headed straight for Tokyo Tower. He was about to enter the dungeons of the Demon Castle. He stood before the entrance, his heart pounding excitedly at the thought of the battle ahead. Izuku took out the key to the dungeon of the Demon's Castle from his inventory. He pressed the key in front. The familiar red energy vortex rotated in front of him. It began to form a portal with high-intensity energy. Izuku stepped in. He was immediately greeted with a flame and a view of the city burning into a sea of flames. A familiar system message appeared in front of him. Ring. Floors 1 to 27 are open. Which floor do you want to access? 27. Izuku's body was shrouded in red light. He moved to the 27th floor. As soon as he arrived, demons began to surround him. He smiled at this scene. He then retracted his dagger and began to rush towards the crowd of demons in front of him. The demons in front of him were cut off and began to fall one by one. Izuku felt a feeling that he hadn't felt for a long time. The heat of the battle, the sensation of the hand holding the weapon, he missed this sensation. He finally felt right at home. This is where it belongs. Right? This is where I belong. A smile expands at the corner of Izuku's mouth. He can feel his heart beating wildly. He clutched his dagger once again in a hurry to kill the demon in front of him, making enough space. He then raised his hand to summon his long sleeping soldiers, waiting for their master's call. Arise. His shadow grew, taking the form of knights and monsters. Among the shadows, the most prominent shadows were a knight with a red mane, an ice elf known as Hayaki, a knight holding a huge axe and shield and an ice bear shadow covered with battle scratches. They are all subject to one master, ready to fulfill the will of the master. It's been a long time, everyone. Izuku looked at his troops and then turned his eyes. They had been surrounded by demons on that floor. Let's go. Chapter 14 At the police station, Tsukachi was holding his head. His head was spinning thinking about the case he was working on. His desk was full of documents and quite messy. Tsukachi is working on a case where a villain commits a robbery, as well as a murderer and manages to escape through a mysterious impenetrable portal. At first, they thought it was the villain's quirk, but after investigation, it turned out not to be. The villain's quirk is related to speed. They assumed the villain had an ally, but based on his criminal record, he committed all his crimes alone. Police are currently being confused with a portal used by criminals to escape. The portal did not disappear even after a few days, and since no one could enter, the investigation stalled. 
Tsukachi has put all his efforts into this case, but he still doesn't know what is going on. He also asked some heroes to help, but still no improvement. Amidst the confusion, he suddenly remembered a story he had heard not long ago about a gate connecting to another world full of monsters. At first, he didn't believe it and thought it was just a story. But now that he found something similar, he started to think about it again. This is just an assumption, but he is sure there must be some clue. He then pulled out his cell phone, making a call to the person who told the story. Somewhere in the city of Hasu, in an abandoned building several people gathered in front of a kind of blue portal that was about to close. Among those people, Izuku is one of them. He had just completed a dungeon raid with his team, where Izuku was their leader. A year has passed since his house arrest. Izuku is now 12 years old and has reached the A rank within a year. His daily life hasn't changed much. He was still raiding dungeons as usual and on vacation. He went to the Demon Castle dungeon or visited Fayumi and Shoto. Many are against Izuku rising to a rank, but thanks to the performance he showed during the tests and the record of the results of his raids, he was able to pass it. Izuku once again recorded his name in Hunter history as the fastest to reach the A rank in a year. The new team he led had no choice but to admit this fact after seeing his performance during the raid. Thanks to him, they were able to get out unscathed. Izuku was cleaning up his equipment after finishing making a report to the bureau agent. Suddenly, he heard his phone ring. He took out his phone to see who was calling him. Hello, Tsukachi-san. Hello, Izuku. Sorry if I bothered you. Are you busy? No, not at all. Well, can we meet? I have something to ask you. Sure. Where should I meet you? Just say where you are at the moment. I'll pick you up. I am currently in Hasu City. What are you doing there? Work. All right. I'll meet you there. After hanging up the phone, Izuku saw his team say that he had some business to deal with so that they could go first, which they all agreed to because of the fatigue they felt after two consecutive raids. Izuku goes to a nearby park after sending his teammates home, waiting for Tsukachi to pick him up. Ten minutes went by, and Tsukachi finally arrived. They then looked for a quiet cafe to chat with. They arrived at a coffee shop that had only a few people including employees, suitable for holding private meetings here. After finishing the order, Tsukachi took a few pictures and showed them to Izuku. It was a photo of a blue portal that looked familiar to Izuku. Izuku widened his eyes as soon as he saw it. Tsukachi-san from where did you get this? As expected you know about this. Izuku was silent for a moment. He hesitated to answer because he didn't have the authority to do so. Yes I know. Can you tell me what it is? I am investigating a case involving this thing. I'm sorry Tsukachi-san. I'm afraid I can't do that. The problem is I don't have the authority to reveal it to you. I have to talk to my superiors to get permission. Is that so? Um, can you at least help me with this? Please, I've been chasing this villain for a month. He is a murderer who threatens the citizens. I'll try to talk to my superiors to see if there's anything I can do with it. I thank you for your help. Don't mention it. Izuku steps aside for a while to call Sujimoto, asking for permission to help Tsukachi with his case. After discussing for a while, he finally gave permission, as long as the police allowed the bureau to participate in the investigation, which would later involve Izuku as their agent. Izuku then approached Tsukachi, who was waiting for him to tell him the good news and the conditions their bureau had given them to conduct the investigation. Tsukachi then agreed to the trim given. At first, Izuku was confused about where to start, but then he started telling him about the gate, dungeon, and hunter. Suakuchi listens carefully throughout the story, trying not to miss anything. So you mean that there is a portal that connects our world with another world full of monsters, and only those who receive awakening can enter? Yes, is there a part you don't understand? But it doesn't make sense. Well, this world itself didn't make sense in the first place, Izuku replied as he drank his almost cold coffee. But how could no one know about it? Izuku smiled faintly. 
recalling his old memories. It is all thanks to the hard work of the government that no one knows about it. Okay, so that means this villain is already an awakener and can go in and out of the gate freely. Maybe, but being in a dungeon is not easy. You have to deal with the monsters in it. Because he entered the dungeon at random, he could accidentally break into a high-ranking dungeon and encounter a powerful monster. I'm not sure if he'll be alive if that happens. So how can we track it down? I can help you with that. If he is an awakened, then I can trace his mana trail. Since my job is an assassin, I'm more suitable when it comes to tracking mana than other hunters. Are you sure about this? Yes. And also I'm stronger than you think. After finishing discussing the matter of the case, Izuku and Tsukachi head to the location where the villain was last seen. They came to an alley far away from the crowd. Izuku began to look around, looking for which traces were left behind. His eyes began to glow blue as he lifted his mana. Tsukachi couldn't feel it, but he knew something had changed about Izuku. Found him. What? Already? Tsukachi couldn't believe that Izuku was able to find the villain in such a short time. Although it took almost an entire day for the police to track him down. It was indeed a bit vague. But there is a trace of magic here leading to a place. Follow me. Izuku begins to walk out of the hall, following the magic trail left by the villain. While Tsukachi just follows him silently from behind. After a 20 minute walk. They came to an empty building near a hill quite far from the first location. Izuku didn't feel any presence from inside the building, but he could feel the mana flowing from inside. They headed inside, which was just an ordinary shabby room filled with dust and moss since it was left empty for a long time. They kept walking until they came to a large room that looked like a hall. There is an open gate in the middle of the room. Tsukachi was stunned to see the gate right in front of his eyes. The scene he had never seen before made him pause for a moment admiring the gate in front of him. Izuku narrowed his eyes as he felt the magical energy radiating out of the gate. Based on the magical energy he felt, this gate was between rank D to rank C, and it felt like it was about to break, to clear this dungeon alone. At least one hunter ranks B or two rank C and several hunter ranks D and E. As for rank A, they must be able to complete this kind of dungeon alone, thinking of contacting the Bureau for help, but he quickly dismissed the thought by shaking his head. This shouldn't be a big deal for Izuku, because he is in a rank hunter. Tsukachi said I'm going in. Tsukachi was surprised by the sudden statement Izuku made. He immediately grabbed the shoulders of Izuku, who was about to walk in. Wow, wait! Are you sure? You're not going to ask for help or what? It's okay. I'm in a rank hunter. The D rank dungeon won't be a problem for me. Besides, I have to close this before the break occurs. After removing Tsukacha's hand from his shoulder after reassuring him, he continued to walk inside the gate. The interior of the dungeon itself is an ordinary cave with a little blood residue. He could see that there were traces of fighting left on the walls and floors of the cave. He followed in the trail, and as he followed it, the trail began to look strange. At first, the traces left were only sharp weapons, but as he followed him the traces began to increase, and he could see the footsteps of human scratches on the floor dragged into the boss's room. There are also traces of accompanying blood along the trajectory. Izuku entered the boss room and witnessed a gore scene where a man's body was torn to pieces by wolf fangs. He wasn't even shaken by seeing this scene. He had already seen much worse than this. He then sighed. There was nothing he could do in this kind of situation. Ligris. A shadow knight formed behind him. Bring some soldiers and clean up this place. I will take care of this person. Igris then lowered his hat. And several shadow knights and shadow monsters formed behind the two. Igris and the other shadow warriors then swarmed the crowd of monsters in front of them, leaving Izuku alone with the villain's corpse. Looking at the corpse, this villain is almost unrecognizable by the bite wounds and scratches all over his body. Izuku took out his jacket and covered his corpse with it. Izuku took the body on his shoulder and then walked out. Outside, 
Tsukachi stood in front of the gate worried. He even tried to get in but couldn't, like there was a transparent wall blocking him, based on what he heard from Izuku. The gate was an unexpected place where anything could happen. Since he didn't have access to know what happened inside, he could only pray that nothing bad would happen. Tsukachi paced back and forth in front of the gate. He stopped once, knocking his feet on the floor. He tried to be patient and believe in Izuku this time. It wasn't long before he could see the silhouette of someone from inside the gate walking outside. The silhouette became clearer and clearer. Izuku walked out carrying someone wrapped in a jacket on his shoulder. Izuku saw Tsukachi who was waiting for him. He then looked for a space and then laid down the villain's body. Tsukachi approached him as well. He looked at the corpse of the villain. He couldn't hide his surprise after seeing the condition of the villain's body. Azuku this. It seems that we are late. The monster has already made his conditions like this when I arrived. I found traces of fighting inside. He was forcibly dragged into the boss's room and finally became their food. But this. I know. What kind of monster does this? The red wolves. They are stronger and faster than ordinary wolves. Also because they are trapped inside for almost a week, they become more brutal and ferocious. Tsukachi closed his eyes and then took a deep breath. The case that gave him a headache for a few days has been over, but now he has to have another headache. How should I write a report now? And with that, I'll see you all in the next part. For those who are interested, we have a Discord down below. Be sure to aim for the stars, drink plenty of water, and for us to cause chaos. With that take care until next we see each other again.